This video is for anybody who owns the Beta FPV Light Radio 3 with Express LRS built in and is trying to get it to bind to their Express LRS receiver. The specific receiver we're going to be working with in this video is this Beta FPV Meteor 65. And the reason we're working with this hardware is, well, it's a fairly common, popular combination, but why don't I just refer you to one of the Express LRS tutorials that I've already got? And the answer is that the way that Beta FPV manages their hardware is a little bit different. You don't use Express LRS Configurator to flash this radio or to configure it. You use Beta FPV Configurator. And I've never messed with that before. So let's do this together. If you've got this exact hardware, let's figure out how to bind it and see about the ways in which this tutorial would be different than an Express LRS tutorial if you were just working with any other third-party Express LRS hardware. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The first thing you need to know if you're working with Beta FPV hardware is that some Beta FPV hardware is managed via a custom program that Beta FPV created called Beta FPV Configurator. And if you look here, here's Beta FPV Configurator. I'll put a link in the video description where you can download it. And of course, it's on Beta FPV's website. And this configurator that you're looking at right now is for some of their quadcopters. Notice it says here the Light Brush, the Cetus FPV, the Cetus Pro, uh, but not all of them. And this is part of what's confusing about Beta FPV hardware. Some Beta FPV quadcopters, you simply use Beta Flight Configurator just like any other flight controller. Some of them you have to use Beta FPV Configurator. Fine. The same is true for their controllers. So this Beta FPV Configurator is for the Light Radio 3 and the Light Radio 2 SE, but not for the Light Radio 2 SE Free Sky version or the Baiyang version or the Pro version. So the first thing you got to do if you're in this situation is figure out what program you need to be using in order to manage it. In this case, this is the program we're going to use. Now, normally in an Express LRS tutorial, I would tell you to use the screen on the radio, run the Express LRS script, and put the radio into binding mode and do whatever else you need to do. But you can see that this radio doesn't have a screen, and so how are we going to get it into binding mode, and how are we going to flash and configure it? That's what we're going to be digging into deeper in this video. So just for fun, let's plug in USB, and we have a pulsing or breathing is the word they use, green light here, which means it's connected. We need to click here on this button to go to the radio transmitter configurator. There's one for the flight controllers and one for their radio transmitters. And then we will just hit connect RC. And sure enough, here we are. And we can configure the basic settings on the radio. Uh, and what I'm most concerned with is the Express LRS settings. Oh, uh, well, I can't turn the power up. That's a shame. I can change the packet rate. Um, if you're new to Express LRS, lower packet rates give you longer range with more latency. Higher packet rates give you shorter range with less latency. And it's just a trade-off of how much range you're okay with. Uh, and uh, if we want to, we could enable the bind phrase. So in Express LRS, one of the ways to handle binding is by putting a bind phrase on all of the devices. It's sort of like a Wi-Fi password, but it's not really a password per se. But basically, all the Express LRS devices that have the matching bind phrase will be bound together. You can actually have multiple radios with the same bind phrase, and whichever one you decide you want to use that day, you just grab it and use it, and all your quadcopters are bound to it. Now, you can bind Express LRS using the traditional way of just binding it without a bind phrase, and some people do that, especially beginners, but most people uh, who really get into Express LRS would want to use a bind phrase. You know what? Let's go through with the binding phrase method, and then I'll show you the simpler method that doesn't use a binding phrase later in the video. All right, so I'll make up a binding phrase. Uh, beta FPV is my binding phrase. Don't use, don't use a commonly guessable phrase. That's a bad idea. I'm going to hit save and reboot. The next thing I need to do is get that bind phrase onto the receiver on this quadcopter. And normally the way that you do that is you compile and flash firmware to the Express LRS receiver that contains your bind phrase. Or there is a way that you can actually connect to the receiver with a web browser over Wi-Fi and put your bind phrase in. But we're not going to do either of those things with this receiver because this receiver is an SPI-based receiver. And what that means is that the receiver 
uh, programming code is built into Betaflight. And what that means is that you don't flash and manage this Express Alerts receiver like you do most others. Most most manufacturers are moving away from SPI-based receivers for this reason, but um, some still have SPI receivers, and th that's why one of the things that makes binding this a little more complicated. So the way to put your bind phrase into uh, an SPI-based receiver is to go into the Betaflight command line and put in this string of text. And I can't right-click copy. Let's try Control-C and see if it works. So I'm going to plug in the quadcopter. I'm going to start Betaflight Configurator. If you're brand new to the hobby and you've never downloaded Betaflight Configurator before, I have a Betaflight playlist. Uh, and the very first episode of that playlist teaches you how to download and get set up with Betaflight Configurator and connect it to your quad. I'll put a link to that down in the video description if you uh, need that. So I'll hit connect here and I will go to the CLI, right to the CLI, and I will right click paste. And sure enough, yay, it's there. And then I will type the word save to save that. Now at this point, they should be bound. Simply putting the same uh, binding phrase into the flight controller and the controller should mean that they're bound. So if we go to the receiver tab here, well, some shit's going on. Uh, it's going crazy. Is it, is it even on? Is it, what if I like unplug the radio and power it down, okay? Now it's not going crazy anymore. What if I power the radio up? Radio's powered up. Oh! No, it's going crazy. The f way to go, Beta FPV. It's kind of working. Like if I go up here, you can see that the throttle is jumping to full, but then it's jumping back down to 885 and the aux channels are going nuts. Here's the situation that we find ourselves in. This flight controller has a freaking problem. Uh, the configuration on this flight controller is all messed up. It's just not right at all in any way. Some values don't even appear in the configurator. And I thought, well, maybe this this is actually a, a, a not a release version of Betaflight Configurator. I'm running on my computer. I was like, okay, well, maybe it's my configurator. I went and tried it on another computer. It's the same problem. And it won't even connect to SpeedyB. So... This is something's up, and I, I'm going to try and get it working again, but that's not supposed to be the topic of this video. So, in the meantime, let me show you. the. It is bound. It is bound. It's acting like it's bound. Like, when I move the throttle, I can see the channels sort of moving. Um, I want to show you the other way to bind it without a binding phrase. That's what this video is supposed to be about. So, we'll power the radio down and plug it in, and we'll go back to Beta FPV Configurator. We'll go to the radio transmitter and connect. And we will disable the bind phrase. I don't know why that takes a second to pop up. Disable the bind phrase, save and reboot. Okay. Following that, we will go to Beta Flight and we will uh, put this command in to get rid of the binding phrase. Um, great, yep, it's cleared now. And we are back how we started. The alternative to a binding phrase is to power the radio on and use the bind button on the bottom of the radio. And uh, for people who've been RC forever, you're probably thinking bind button. Of course, that's the way to do it. There are some advantages to binding phrases, but most like, for example, if you get a new radio, then you don't have to rebind all your receivers. You just put the bind phrase in the new radio and now it's bound to all your quads. But eh, a lot of people would just prefer to use the binding button. So we'll press the bind button here and the light is blinking. And then some SPI based flight controllers will have a bind button on the flight controller, but I don't see that. Instead, we're gonna go into beta flight configurator and we're gonna go to the receiver tab and there is a bind receiver button right here. And I hope that when we click that button, we will see some change in the LED status uh, indicating that we're going into binding. Oh, there we go. That seems like it worked. It blinked and then it turned blue. But if that's true, we should have a solid status LED on this flight controller and I don't see that. So I'm still a little suspicious. Drones, Meteor Series. It's the 65. I think they've just changed the canopy since this guy bought it. Meteor 65 brushless. I don't think he's got the Pro. Where can I find the old version? This is it. This is the hex file. Okay, we're getting closer. So this is the SX1280 version. 
with the SPI receiver. This might be the flight controller that we actually have, 430. Can I just flash the SX1280? Can I reflash this? And then let's see if we can get the CLI dump here. The new CLI file, download the new CLI dump. This information is all out of date. Flash is finished. We'll connect. Can we bind it? Like this is just brand new firmware. Can we bind it? <gasps> oh, it's working. There we go, it bound. And, <gasps> and it's not freaking out now that I flashed this firmware to it. That's encouraging. That's how it's supposed to work. You press the bind RX button on the computer and the bind button on the, and then boom, they're bound. No binding phrase. That totally worked the first time and I didn't have to just reflash the whole gosh dang flight controller with brand new firmware because for whatever reason, the firmware that was on it was effed up. No, no. Um, okay. Let's see if I can finish configuring this guy's quadcopter. And uh, that's just how simple it is. Either you put your binding phrase in to the radio and into Betaflight using the command line option, or you bind it using the bind button here on the bottom of the, uh, the controller and the bind receiver button in Betaflight configurator. What could be simpler than that? Well, I could edit this down and make it look like this didn't even happen, but I don't feel like that would be honest. And um, I uh, could give Beta FPV the benefit of the doubt and assume that they shipped it to the customer in perfect condition. And then the customer, while trying to bind it, did weird things to it and messed it up. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more about ExpressLRS, I'll put a card on screen to the my ExpressLRS getting started guide, as well as my ExpressLRS 3.0 update. There are a few things that have come out in ExpressLS 3.0 that you should probably know about. And uh, I'll see you in one of those two videos where hopefully things will be smoother. See you there.